The following algorithm for classifying gram-positive microorganisms summarizes how to identify specific bacterial strains based on their unique characteristics. We'll spend some time on the identification of staph and strep species. Each individual bacterium will be discussed in greater detail as you move along in the chapter. First, let's say you gram stained an unknown bacterial sample and found that the color of the bacteria was purple-blue. Does this mean that the bacterium is gram-negative or gram-positive? Correct, it's a gram-positive organism. Next, let's focus on the shape of the organism. Gram-positive organisms will have one of three main shapes, cocci or circular, bacillus or rod, or branching filament. Let's say that we see a purple-blue, cocci-shaped, gram-positive organism. This means that there are only two possibilities for the organism we're dealing with, staphylococcus or streptococcus. It's easy to differentiate the two. Staphylococcus will present in clusters and will produce catalase positive. Streptococcus will present in chains and will not produce catalase, catalase negative. Catalase is an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. Just remember that staph will make catalase because it has more staph to do the extra work. So you see purple-blue cocci in clusters that are catalase positive. You've identified that it is staphylococcus. Now test whether it is coagulase positive or negative. Coagulase is an enzyme produced by Staph aureus, which enables the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin and results in clotting of blood. Coagulase negative organisms that do not clot blood will be Staph epidermidis or Staph saprophyticus. What if the organism was purple blue cocci in chains that are catalase negative? You've identified Streptococcus, but you need to determine which of the several important strep species you have. This is done by looking at hemolysis patterns. Hemolysis is the breakdown of red blood cells in culture by hemolytic enzymes found in some strep species. There are three types of hemolysis. Alpha hemolysis results in a green ring around strep pneumoniae or viridans streptococci in blood agar. The green is from the color change in the agar due to peroxide produced by the bacteria. Beta hemolysis results in complete clearing around group A or group B strep. This is due to hemolysin production, which completely lyses blood. Gamma hemolysis results in no clearing or hemolysis because hemolysin is not present. Novobiosin and bacitracin are two antibiotics used to identify certain staphylococci and streptococci species, respectively. Optican is a chemical that is useful for distinguishing strep pneumonia and viridan strep. These antibiotics or chemicals are in the form of small discs, which are placed within the growth medium. Resistant bacteria will grow around these discs, while sensitive bacteria will be unable to grow in the presence of the disc and clearing around the disc will be visible. As already discussed, bacteria that can produce alpha hemolysis or partial hemolysis when grown in blood agar include strep pneumonia and viridan streptococci. When trying to differentiate the different streptococci species, those that produce beta hemolysis or complete hemolysis when grown in blood agar are which two bacterial species? Yes, that's right. Group A strep, strep pyogenes, and group B strep, strep agalectiae, can do this. You should also know, however, that there are two other gram-positive organisms that have hemolysin and can demonstrate beta hemolysis. These are Staph aureus and Listeria. Staph aureus is our coagulase and catalase positive gram-positive cocci. It is the most common cause of food poisoning, referred to as the 24-hour bug. Ingestion of the Staph aureus enterotoxin produces nausea and vomiting within six hours with resolution within a day. It is associated with mayonnaise-containing food that has been sitting out at room temperature, so think of picnics and buffets. You will encounter MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, with increasing frequency in your medical career, both in the community and in the hospital. When you suspect Staph aureus in a skin or wound infection, it is safer to assume and treat the infection with an antibiotic against MRSA while you wait for culture and susceptibility results to return. TMP-SMX, 
vancomycin, and clindamycin are commonly used antibiotics against MRSA, but you will learn more about this in the antimicrobial section. Staph aureus is also a common cause of endocarditis and osteomyelitis. Staph epidermidis is our catalase-positive, coagulase-negative, gram-positive cocci. Remember that staph epidermidis is normal flora found on your skin, epidermis equals skin, and can infect any external devices that penetrate the skin. This is why we swab skin with alcohol wipes before collecting blood in the hospital in an effort to kill staph epidermidis and prevent it from entering and contaminating the blood. If you see questions that state staph epidermidis was grown on blood culture, remember that this means the blood collection process was not done properly, rather than the patient having a staph epidermidis bacteremia. Strep pneumonia is our alpha hemolytic gram-positive cocci that is optican sensitive. MOPS is a useful mnemonic for remembering the types of infections that strep pneumonia causes, meningitis, otitis media, pneumonia, and sinusitis. Strep pneumo, not Neisseria meningitidis, which we'll discuss in the gram-negative section, is the most common cause of meningitis in children 6 months to 6 years and in the elderly. Remember for later that N. meningitidis is the most common cause for those people between 6 and 60 years old. H. influenza used to be the most common cause of otitis media in children before the Hib vaccine was developed. Now strep pneumonia has replaced H. flu as the leading cause of this infection in the middle ear. Strep pneumonia is the most common cause of pneumonia in people aged 40 years and up, adults and the elderly. Suspect pneumonia in patients who present with fever, productive cough, rusty colored sputum, and consolidation on chest x-ray. Finally, S. pneumonia is a common cause of sinusitis that can present with symptoms such as congestion, headache, green-yellow discharge, malaise, and general tightening sensation within the sinus cavities. Viridan strep is our alpha hemolytic gram-positive cocci that is optican resistant. Remember, optican resistance is what distinguishes viridan strep from strep pneumonia. A useful mnemonic is that viridans lives in the mouth because it is not afraid of the chin. Viridans is normal flora found in the mouth. A subspecies of viridan strep, Streptococcus mutans, is the bacteria in our mouth responsible for tooth cavities. When you eat a lot of sugar, S. mutans can convert that sucrose into lactic acid, creating an acidic environment in your mouth that makes it vulnerable to decay. Viridan strep can also cause subacute bacterial endocarditis. A possible scenario is after a dental procedure when manipulation of the mouth with invasive tools can cause viridan strep to enter the bloodstream. Viridan strep can then travel through the blood and seed itself onto your heart valves. This is most likely to occur if your heart valves are already damaged, for example, if you had rheumatic fever or prior heart surgery. Now we'll talk about strep pyogenes, also known as group A strep, a beta hemolytic bacitracin sensitive gram positive cocci. The key diseases that you should know that S. pyogenes causes are pharyngitis, strep throat, glomerular nephritis, and rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever is a result of untreated S. pyogenes pharyngitis only, not skin or soft tissue S. pyogenes infections such as cellulitis and impetigo. Earlier, we talked about the M protein being S. pyogenes virulence factor because it is antiphagocytic. Our immune systems, however, can produce antibodies against the M protein in an effort to fight the S. pyogenes infection. These antibodies are dangerous because they can cross-react against the same M protein found in cardiac muscle tissue. This leads to damage of heart valves, such as the mitral valve, and causes rheumatic fever. Therefore, it is important to treat all cases of group A strep pharyngitis, even if the patient no longer has any symptoms or discomfort from the infection, in order to prevent the possible development of rheumatic fever in the future. S. pyogenes is one of the few bacteria left that remain susceptible to penicillin. Glomerular nephritis is another complication of S. pyogenes infections that you will learn more about in the renal chapter. 
However, it is important for you to know that glomerular nephritis can result from untreated S. pyogenes pharyngitis and or skin and soft tissue infections. Strep agalectiae, or group B strep, is a beta-hemolytic gram-positive cocci distinguished from group A strep by the fact that it is bacitracin resistant. You can think of the B as standing for babies, since group B strep mostly causes diseases such as pneumonia, meningitis, and sepsis in infants. Newborns usually acquire the pathogen via passage through a vaginal canal that has been colonized with the bacteria. Group B strep is normal flora in the genital tract of approximately a quarter of all women. Therefore, it is standard practice in the U.S. to screen all pregnant women at approximately 35 to 37 weeks gestation for group B strep colonization. Those women who are positive will receive intrapartum penicillin a few hours before giving birth to prevent serious infection. The enterococcus genus of streptococci possess a group D Lansfield antigen and can grow under harsh conditions. 6.5% sodium chloride and 40% bile salts, which is why they are able to survive as normal flora in the colon. This is in contrast to the non-enterococcal group D streptococci species, such as strep bovis, which we'll discuss in the next fact. E. faecalis and E. facium are clinically relevant, mostly causing disease in hospitalized or immunocompromised patients. UTIs in catheterized patients, post-surgical peritonitis, and subacute bacterial endocarditis are common infections caused by these organisms. Vancomycin-resistant enterococci, VRE, is an increasing problem in the hospital, found in approximately 20% of E. facium isolates.